Hello everyone, my name is Torfin Olson, and I'm a technical program manager on the Bedrock team at Protocol Labs. First off, I'd like to thank HessXX Future Data for inviting me to the China Web3 Big Data Summit. So who am I? I'm a technical program manager with a background in building ground up global data intensive applications from Web3 all the way to IoT. I joined Protocol Labs in order to be a part of driving breakthroughs in computing that push humanity forward. It's our core mission at Protocol Labs. What's this presentation about? You're going to learn about the Interplanetary Network Indexer, why you should be excited about it if you currently store data on Filecoin, or if you're interested in storing data for Filecoin in the future. We'll also talk about the future of finding data on the Filecoin network, what that looks like for both retrieval clients and for storage providers alike. So why should you be interested in a network indexer? The Interplanetary Network Indexer enables a very fast way to find data stored by storage providers on the IPFS Filecoin network. What problem does the IPNI solve? The Filecoin IPFS network is already vast. It's growing at an amazing rate. In the next few years, it's only going to grow faster as demands for storage rapidly increase. This network depends on files being named with content identifiers. In order to find them, this is one of the novel differences between a content addressable network and a traditional location-based network which uses IP addresses and URLs. To be usable, content address data also needs to be fast. The IPNI takes lookups of content address data and makes them fast enough to compete with Web2 location address data. Instead of multiple steps attempting to find peers, the IPNI presents one representation which has all of the locations for every SID that's been advertised to it which can be found immediately. So what is it exactly when we really get down to it? Storage providers want to advertise their content that's stored in the indexer. The retrieval clients want to find that content as quickly as possible. To improve content discoverability, indexer nodes are developed to store mappings of SIDs to content providers for content lookup upon retrieval request. We aim to reach the end state of an efficient and universal retrieval across the Filecoin network. The IPNI ecosystem consists of three main actors. Content providers, these are the participants who host content addressable data also known as storage providers. IPNI nodes, these are the participants who ingest announcements about the content addressable data. And then retrieval clients. These are the participants who find such content via indexer nodes and they fetch it from the providers. So let's take a closer look. Um, at, at each of these three components. Content providers are responsible for cataloging and maintaining the latest list of content they host, along with protocols over which the content is retrievable. The list of content is represented as a chain of advertisements signed by the content provider's identity uh, that are immutable. An advertisement can either represent addition or removal of content. This property, combined with the chaining of advertisement entries, effectively captures a diff of content hosted by the provider over time. When a change in content occurs, either new content is added or perhaps some is removed, 
The provider captures the change as a new advertisement, adds it to the chain, and announces its existence to the network. The indexer node itself. IPNI nodes are responsible for continuously listening to provider announcements. Once they receive an announcement, they fetch the advertisement and walk its chain to effectively construct the current list of content hosted by the provider. Because the advertisements themselves are immutable, IPNI nodes can infer seen from unseen advertisements and only walk the portion of the chain that has not been seen before. This property enables very efficient traversal of these chains and allows IPNI nodes to tolerate very long ad chains as long as they continuously listen to advertisements and stay relatively close to the chain's head, i.e. the latest advertisement in the chain. The retrieval client is the party that wants to retrieve the data. They look up index records via queries to APIs that are exposed by the IPNI nodes. It sends a SID and the API returns a list of index records corresponding with it. The index record has the ID of the content provider, address, and the protocols to retrieve the data. Filters providers list by protocol and retrieves the content directly from the providers. All right, so let's try to put all these pieces that we've discussed together. It's gonna be a little intimidating at first glance if you look at the whole picture, but stay with me. We'll go through this one part at a time and it'll make a lot of sense. It's actually quite simple. So the first step of this process is the storage provider announces new content. The storage provider publishes that content via Gossip Sub to the indexer. The details of how aren't incredibly important initially. But the important thing to take away from this is that the storage provider has to announce to the indexer node that it got new data uh, and then it publishes it. It can also directly communicate this to the indexer via HTTP. The second step is the indexer syncs new content. So anytime the storage provider gets new content, um, it needs to be synced to the indexer node uh, and it can get advertisements in the chain up to the last scene or the end of the chain. It gets the context ID, metadata, content multi-hash, and the chunk chain for the new advertisements. Then the retrieval client queries the indexer. So this is the find operation. <clears throat> the retrieval client finds the storage provider um, passes the SID or multi-hash of the data they want to retrieve, and then the indexer node responds with a list of provider records for each SID looked up. Uh, this includes the latest provider addresses. And then the client finally retrieves the data. So at this point, the retrieval client uses the protocol indicated in the provider record either bit swap or graph sync. Uh, and then the storage provider uses the context ID and the metadata to find the content requested. Uh, the retrieval client sends the provider record to the storage provider. Now that we've talked a little bit at a high level about the components of the indexer, how it operates and the role that it plays in our ecosystem for helping to look up files quickly I wanted to talk a little bit about what the future of the network indexer holds and some of the exciting things that we're currently working on on the Bedrock team. In the immediate term, we're currently working on uh, double hashing 
of the value store, which is where the relationship between the SIDs and the storage provider IDs are, are stored such that um, we can enable reader privacy. And so this will prevent people from potentially being able to reconstruct um, what people are looking at when they're searching for content on the network. Additionally, uh, we're working on the ability to fetch from alternative advertisement sources. So um, you potentially don't have to you know, run our advertisements, you can provide advertisements via different, different means. And then also, we're working on uh, reputation-based ranking of providers. Uh, we're starting with a design plan for that presently. And then ultimately, we want to help our other index operators adapt to double hashing so that they'll also have the benefits of this additional privacy. In the longer term, we'd like to work on caching the indexer edge nodes. So this is the ability to uh, distribute the network outwards and put these indexers closer to where the content is being searched for. That way, there's not one central indexer instance or a specific geo-locked instance that uh, you're looking up. There's an array of indexers that you could call upon near to the region where you'd like to perform your lookup. Um, that way it's a faster lookup, there's less traffic created across the network, and additionally, you have the benefit of decentralization, so the network's more secure uh, by result of having multiple nodes in different locations. Uh, also, we're looking at getting uh, auto discovery of indexers by Kubo nodes. And so this is uh, the ability for um, the IPFS network Kubo nodes to auto discover indexers and potentially um, validate uh, the quality of an indexer and uh, choose the appropriate indexer to fulfill a search query. Really, the longer term goal for this team is presently we have one network instance sid.contact that is currently managing all the traffic and we have partner instances that you can look at here shout out to sxx um, who are also running independent indexer instances ultimately our goal is to connect these indexer instances and ensure that each of them has the most up-to-date copies of the index and that we can keep them all in sync with one another so that they're all able to serve uh, content lookups. All right, and ultimately before I bid you all adieu, uh, I'd like to provide you with some resources to potentially learn more and also uh, to encourage you to join us in the Filecoin Slack channel, hashtag IPNI. Uh, you can ask us any questions there. The members of the team are all very active participants. Um, but if you'd like to learn more, I'd recommend starting out with this blog post that I've linked up at the top on the Filecoin blog about the network indexer. Um, there is a description page of how the IPNI works. Uh, network indexer specs are on GitHub. It's an open source project, so you're welcome to come take a look, comment, ask questions there. We're happy to have you. Uh, and then there are some videos for content routing that get really into the weeds on how this all works and uh, what the future holds for us. Again, I'd like to thank SXS for inviting us to participate in this conference and uh, really hoping that some of you would like to reach out and uh, ask us some questions. We'd be happy to help you get an indexer node running uh, should you be interested. Take care everyone and thank you for the invite.